G'day folks, welcome to Intermediate Scenario 2, The Race for Khan. This takes place on the 6th of June in the afternoon. It's a slightly larger version of one of those introductory scenarios. Uh, let's get into it and see how it goes. So here we have the initial setup for this Intermediate Scenario 2, The Race for Khan. This is a slightly larger version of that introductory scenario for To The Sea, which I played through earlier and which you can watch my uh, video for. That introductory scenario took place over two turns, the 1700 and 1900 turns. This scenario takes place over the whole afternoon and evening. It runs from 1300 through to 2100 and um, starts, uh, as I just said, just after midday as uh, as the 3rd Division, uh, the 8th Brigade, have kind of just cleared the beaches. Uh, 185th Brigade uh, have been slow getting going. They've just got off the beaches. And what else is happening? Um, so this, this is just the setup. Um, yes, 8th Brigade pushing down here. 185th out to the, the left. Um, commandos pushing along the beach there. Uh, with Pegasus Bridge down on the right. We're at present just the 716th, mainly 716th on the board, with the German 21st Panzer Division to arrive as reinforcements, mainly, I think, actually entirely from the south. So they'll be pushing up here uh, with various objectives. So the Allies need to capture well, these two strong points and a position way down in the south down here, uh, Lebesy, whilst the uh, 21st Panzer needs to arrive, capture Hill one, uh, 61, capture Pe Pegasus Bridge, and, um, oh, and interdict that road. Now you may recall that road was the main priority in that introductory scenario. They drove around to the left here, held part of Luc Semer. Uh, and prevented the Allies from displacing them from that area. Uh, so they have more choices here. It's a bigger, um, bigger time span, uh, more options available to plan their attack. They were really rushed in that last scenario. Both sides really were. The um, Germans rushed on the board, seized that road and couldn't be displaced. Uh, this time around, they've got various objectives to consider. Now, I haven't worked out... Uh, any clear plans yet. Not many Germans arrive in the first turn, so really it'll be the Allies pushing, um, and I think mainly getting rid of these two points, trying to get rid of those two uh, strong points, fortified areas, before the 21st arrives. So I'd really like to throw everything I can. There's a lot of armoured units um, in column on the beach. Uh, if they can quickly rush up, clear those points, it'd be nice to get that done within the first hour. I don't know how realistic that is. Um, even within the second hour, um, I'm not sure, well the Panzers can get quite this ridge line within their first activation once they come on. So clearing those two points and then being in a position to defend Pegasus Bridge, maybe Hill 61. Um, there are, I will say now, some very, very strong 21st Panzer Division units, armoured units coming on the board and uh, the Allies are going to be uh, hard pressed to deal with those and hold them off when they when they counterattack. All right, let's get into it and see how it goes. Okay, so here's the situation at the end of the 1500 turns. We've had two turns, starting at 1300, then 1500, and here we are. So you can see the Allies very slowly pushing out from Sword Beach. Uh, their armoured elements attached to the 185th Brigade. Uh, this is the Staff's Yeomanry have uh, occupied Delavrond out here, um, trying to cut off that uh, camp group for Roche if it should move towards the beach. So they've isolated this uh, Vidastir nest up here. They eliminated one. In fact, it was uh, naval artillery, uh, naval gunfire, which uh, inflicted the last little cohesion hit. This one here is down to two cohesion hits, one more, and it's gone. Um, so they're doing well to secure the beach there. Uh, Marines tried to assault but uh, suffered a lot of cohesion hits. 
elsewhere, the um, Eighth Brigade with um, armor attached are trying to launch some assaults here. They've got the uh, the crabs clearing out the mines very slowly, and some engineers working as well. They're gradually preparing the area around here. You can see um, clearing out the mines here. Mines are being cleared from here, and the defenders suppressed. Um, so looking good out there. A little bit slower in the centre here. I think there might be one cohesion hit um, on the defenders there. But in response, look at all these German reinforcements from the 21st Panzer Division. Um, they have inflicted a uh, step loss on a uh, para company out here, which was in this hex. Um, no other damage yet, but they are looking quite strong with those six trip quality ratings and six firepower rating and a range of three. So they're within range here. They're just shooting away. Um, it was, in fact, it was a direct hit, a zero on that unit, which caused a step loss. Uh, out on the left, of course, Conqueror of Rosh moving around. They may just set up behind this ridge here. It gives them a good field of fire. Um, this is mainly infantry, I should say. Um, they got out of column but haven't dismounted yet, so they'll dismount and I think just set up, maybe even set up some uh, some roadblocks um, and um, regards in this area to help them out. Uh, the... Uh, Allied rear guard here has really struggled. Uh, that, that roadblock is still under there. They failed the trip quality rating, in other words. The Allies, though, have mainly been struggling with their command. Third Division have rolled two very poor rolls on their um, activation chip, which isn't giving them the command they need. They're okay with dispatch points, but uh, really struggling with command points. Conversely, uh, the 716th Infantry Division, all these white counters spread around, and the 21st Panzer Division have been rolling very well and have an excess of command. They can only got to sort of 19 and they're surpassing that. So they're using their command points quite freely, whereas the 3rd Division have really been careful in, uh, in what they do. Um, and as a result, they haven't been able to push quite as hard as they would have liked to. As I said, they're still not past this ridge um, because of these lines of fire that... The Germans have this is now under a barrage marker, but previously it wasn't. Um, so they're struggling to cross this bridge on their divisional activation. They're not allowed to basically unless they spend a command point for their second activation. All right, so things moving very slowly for the Allies. Hopefully, they're, they're hoping that they can get better command roles in the near future. They're currently on four command points, whereas the 21st is currently on 13. That's just an example of the different experiences the two sides are having. All right, let's see how it unfolds. Okay, here we are at the end of the 1900 turns, another two turns done, uh, basically four hours on, and it is a, a tense situation. So much is going on along the lines. You can look at all these barrage markers. I'll take these off in just a moment to show you what's going on below the barrage markers. Um, but the Allies have mainly put most of their pressure uh, via, the, uh, via the 8th Brigade on those two fortified positions and just towards the end of that last turn they finally broke those two positions it was this one fell first it it uh it fell i think last turn uh in the 1700 turn it fell relatively easy this one this was, was it the water no it wasn't the water tower battery was it um I'm trying to find the missing marker. Um, strong point helmet, I think. But where have I put it? Oh, here it is. It was a tough nap to crack. It uh, good troop quality rating, two steps, minus two armor. So you're getting a cumulative, I think minus four in that hex for any fire on assault. Um, a lot of units were failing their bravery check. You can see these are the cohesion hits, uh, and this is after they've rallied. So they, a lot of these units had. Uh, two cohesion hits. Um, a lot of them were just refusing to do anything, refusing to even move, lest they get uh, fired on in opportunity fire by Strong Point Hillman as they tried to leave. So they were just sticking around, holding. Um, and Strong Point Hillman was very effective with this fire because, again, they had a good chance of getting a company bonus. Um, eventually, uh, pouring artillery fire in here, just trying to build up those cohesion hits. Um, 
and a series of assaults by those 8th Brigade Infantry. Finally, just, it was basically one cohesion hit at a time, building up very, very slowly through um, assaults and firing. I didn't do any charges, it was just assault fire, because these units all have pretty good assault ratings. So yeah, it eventually fell, but it's taken four turns to get both of those. That is one of the Allied objectives, though. That's their secondary task complete. Their primary task is all the way down here, um, off the map. I don't like the chance of them achieving that within the next two turns. Their tertiary task, I believe, is to ensure there are no German units in this landing zone. And that's why all these Germans have now pushed up here. So the story from... This has been the Allied story here with the 8th Brigade, clearing those two. That's been their task. 185th Brigade out on the left has moved very slowly. Uh, they cleared the Vitesse Ness out on the coast pretty quickly. And then these two um, German companies, weak in improved positions, have just um, been holding out really well. One just fell to a commando assault. The other one is almost gone, but it has taken a long turn of games. This is four turns, uh, eight hours, really, for 185th just to move up here. The commandos, in the meantime, are pushing through La Deliver Ronde. What actually happened here was, you may recall all this, um, the staff's yeomanry was around here. They pulled back along the road and drove through this centre position. Once that roadblock was cleared and that road, there's a bug, and that road was cleared, they came through here in column and are beginning to threaten the Germans here. Uh, this is, of course, 716 Infantry uh, division. Because of this threat, you can see here the Germans have brought some uh, of the 21st Panzer Division tanks around from the south up this road just to reinforce this block. They do have, as you can see, a roadblock there and um, some engineers in place to hold them. And it's hard for the Allies to get through if they don't get past that roadblock. And with only two turns to go, I anticipate they'll be held up here. Um, but it has forced a response from the from the Germans. Elsewhere, okay, so Count Brutte Roche is holding that ridge quite nicely. Um, that that is one of the reasons why the the armor pulled back around and drove down through here because they didn't like their chances of getting through there. They need infantry support. Basically, there's another roadblock here from the engineers. They need infantry support, and that 158th was was held up too much. So they're pushing through. They are attached to the 185th, so they're, they're still in close proximity on their left flank, uh, but pushing along that main road and helping them kind of, in a sense, roll up. The Germans along that ridge. Now, out here, Camp Group Oppeln has um, started off magnificently. Uh, just, just, I think with their first hit, getting a clean hit, a step loss on that uh, sixth para division unit that was there. They have then they then shifted their attention to this surrounding hex, and the idea was they were going to wipe this out and then surround Pegasus Bridge. Now they are, there's only one unit here, let me show you, there it is, a one-step para. It is suppressed, it has two step losses, but it's in an entrenchment in a village um, and in a minefield. And they have been pouring fire for several hours into this hex. It is almost gone. Um, at the same time, they have focused their attention on opportunity fire, and they have deterred, you can see... The Allies holding back deterred any Allied advance in this area. They have wiped out pretty much all the anti-tank guns that have moved in here. Um, because this is where all the German armour is, the Allies have been trying to bring their AT guns. As soon as an AP, AT gun appears anywhere nearby, the panzers rush, uh, the, the, the tanks rush, rush forward and uh, wipe it out pretty quickly. They all have zero armour. They're unarmoured units and they fall very quickly. Um, to this sort of focused firepower. The same is now happening with the um, other elements of Allied armor. The step loss, two cohesion hits there. Um, so this has been, you may recall, earlier I said that they were going to block this area. They wanted to capture Pegasus Bridge, but um, they've been too slow. There's still a chance they may do so, two turns left. They have dallied a bit. They've just held this area, not advanced. Um, they don't have strong artillery or mortar support um, 
the allies have a lot more it, it seems at least have a lot more mortars um you can see there's any sort of two allied units under barrage markers i should say also most of the allied artillery has been focused on those strong points so they haven't had a lot of support now that they've fallen maybe um yeah we'll see what happens but they are they're a strong force in this area and they do i think i say that and i, I doubt myself maybe they don't have the potential to capture pegasus bridge those entrenchments are um, pretty good and again considering this is a town hex with minefields around it there's only one more turn left the 2100 turn and then it ends they're not going to capture pegasus reach um, what they can do is try to hold this uh, try to move in here and hold it what I'm gonna do is take the barrage markers off and give you a, a better look at what's happening okay well there you go but um, in reality it's probably just a better view of all those allied cohesion hits and step losses. This has been very costly crossing this this ridge. Um, you can get a view here. You can see Camp Griff Roche on the left, Appel on the right, and they've left the centre here for those few units of the 716th. And the 716th have held their ground. Um, and so the Germans have been pushing on the left and the right. Um, hmm. But now the Allies are starting to push through in the centre. Um, so one turn to go. Uh, I don't like the Germans' chances of, of capturing this. This is a suppressed German unit with a step loss. Um, and it is hard to access this space. Basically, they need to follow the road back around. They, these, are, these are, of course, tracked units which cannot cross, cannot cross woods, cannot cross rivers. So this is the only route to Hill 61 along this narrow road. They can't cross this ridge either. So through this road, through these spaces, they're not going to get rid of those allied units. Anyway, before I sort of jump too far ahead, I will play through that final turn and I will report back soon on uh, the final outcome. Okay, so we finally reached through to the end of the scenario. We got through about seven activation chits before the sixth para division chit was drawn. Uh, this goes into the cup on the final turn, all shuffled up, and when this comes out, the scenario ends instantly. The uh, Allies got the drop on the Germans. They had their third division chit drawn first, which enabled them to move into the um, the drop zone around here. These are the Allied units, and basically block the Germans. Uh, they also used uh, artillery in the area. Now that these fortifications have um, uh, uh, been reduced, they can direct that fire into this area. So you can see all these uh, barrage markers on that uh, the, those advanced camp group appellant units. Incidentally, they were the next chip drawn and they tried to recapture, well, tried to capture, seize control of part of that drop zone. They threw pretty much everything they could at this area um, without too much effect. Um, yeah, just good armor ratings on those allies, even out in the open, this uh, armored unit, minus three in open terrain. Um, that was really the focus of most of their efforts, and they didn't get any hits. The infantry out on the right here didn't cause any hits here, but did manage to inflict a cohesion hit on Pegasus Bridge, but that's about all they could do. Uh, elsewhere, um, Grenadier Regiment 736 activated, hurt some allies here. The naval ship was drawn, which caused a few more uh, barrage markers around the area. We had the... Uh, the 8th Brigade activate, and they were trying to fight off the Germans away from this area. Recover some more cohesion, because why not? Um, and then uh, German Direct Command, 21st Panzer Division activation, so some more attacks in this area, spending command points, of which they have quite a lot. And then the scenario ended. Now, let's look at the victory conditions. So the Allies really failed to break through. They failed to capture these two objectives in the south. They're way down here off camera, a long way away. They didn't break through that German line. They did, however, achieve their secondary objective, which was to take those two fortified areas, Strong Point Hillman and the Water Tower Battery. So that's uh, sort of plus 10 victory points. There were no German units in any of the hexes of the drop zone, so they also achieved their tertiary task for another six, a total of 16 victory points. Now the Germans um, didn't reach the road, they didn't take and hold Pegasus Bridge, and they don't have a unit on Hill 61, so they failed to achieve any of their objectives. 
So with plus 16 victory points, this is a, an allied victory despite failing to achieve their main objective. Um, they've blunted that German counterattack. They are beginning to, to drive through the centre here. Um, and they've just, just at the end there, they've linked up with Pegasus Breach way out on the right here. You can see these independent units have linked up kind of along the, um, the Khan Canal here. Those German armoured units out here still pose a threat. Kampgruf Appel is, is still quite strong, um, particularly as the Allies have lost so many AT guns um, in the process. But it's this, this advance here which is uh, giving them some optimism. And this, they've, they've crossed the ridge now. A lot of these infantry from the uh, 185th Brigade have crossed that ridge and are now pushing against um, Kampgruf Rorsch. So it may be that, uh, yeah, 185th, if this were to continue, could push out along this road and threaten um, Matthew out here and then just come around this ridge. Once they're out, this, out here, this is all open terrain out to the left and they can move kind of around this really horrible area here, around Hill, uh, Hill 61. So that is the end of the race for Khan, another really fascinating scenario. These scenarios keep getting better um, as I move through from one to the next. Uh, so I said in the, in the last video that that was my, the last one was my favorite scenario. I think now this one is my favorite scenario and um, yeah, looking forward to the next one.